Welcome to the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, a podcast where we teach speakers how to land paid speaking engagements and corporate contracts. Each week, we deliver high quality content that teaches you how to level up your speaking business. Be sure to join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group after having your mind blown by this information filled episode. Now, here's your host, Ashley Kirkwood, lawyer and professional speaker. This is the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, super excited to be here today. Welcome to the Speaker Way to Cash podcast. We are going to be talking today about how to get your first paid engagement. A lot of what I have been doing recently um, or the talks that I've been having recently have been about getting your uh, first five or six figure corporate speaking offer and kind of teaching the paid method and some of the stuff that I teach now and the stuff that I do now. But because in May, we are coming up on our 100th episode of the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, I'm going to be a little bit more reflective over the next couple of months. We're gonna It's going to be me and you talking, not as many guests. I've gotten some emails that you all like the solo episodes a lot because we can get into some more details. So I'm going to be talking a lot about that today, getting your first paid engagement, what that looks like. So if you know any speakers or potential speakers, people who have an awesome, awesome, awesome message, you want to share this video with them, tag them if you're watching it on video and or share the podcast link with them so that they can listen into this. This will be on the Speaker Ready Cash podcast. But first and foremost, I'm going to walk you through what I did to get my first few paid engagements specifically. And I don't know if I've done this deep dive before, but I'm going to tell you what I did and why I did it, how it worked, and why I inevitably shifted from doing one-off engagements to landing more of those five and six-figure corporate speaking contracts. So if you have any questions about that stuff, drop it in the comments or send me an email if you're listening to this on the podcast to hello at ashleynicolekirkwood.com. All right. And before I forget, I'm recording this in mid-April. So, or the end of April, Lord, this time is going by fast. I'm doing a free webinar at the end of this month. Just go to speakyourwaytocash.com slash webinar to register for that. We have 200 free seats worldwide. Lock in your seat before they go. There's no replay. It's live. I'm. I, this is a gift, okay? Because I do not do this often. So you can click the link in my Instagram bio or just go to speakyourwaytocash.com slash webinar. And in November, we're, of course, doing the Speaker Way to Cash live event, the best event on the planet for speakers and entrepreneurs and thought leaders and anyone else who wants to make speaking a revenue stream. Yeah, it's the best thing going. So make sure you're there if you're serious about making speaking a revenue stream. And this will be our best one yet. Literally every year we top ourselves. And this year we're deliberately topping every other event. We are, we 10x the budget to make it the best experience. I'm just so excited about it. I'll tell y'all more about that. But let's get into the content for today. I'm so glad to be here with you all. So first, when I first started my speaking career, it was really out of necessity. And I don't recommend that that be why you start a business. But I just walked, like I had a a law firm job. I was doing really well in corporate, multi six-figure salary, 300K, left that. And I was like, okay, I had all that adrenaline. Like, oh, yes. Oh, I just left my corporate job. Oh, skip it. I'm not working for the man anymore. You know, all these emotions that were running through me. And I was so excited about it. And then I had this moment that was like, whoa. Well, well, sis, how you going to make money? <laughs> because although I was married when I did this big major walkout and my husband has always worked, but I was like the corporate one in the relationship and he was always the community focused one. So he always worked in public service and education, et cetera. And so like, you know, he could hold it down, but I, I kept the tempo of the lifestyle. So anyone who's married, y'all will get that. So I needed to make money, right? And my husband was so gracious. He was like, look, babe, I don't want you to put a lot of pressure on yourself. Let's just do this. You have six months to be profitable and you have a year to be sustainable. After that, we're going to need to revisit you going back to work or doing something different. Now, I will be honest and say he did not say like, if you don't make it, you have to go back to work. He just said six months to profitability, 12 months to sustainability. He didn't put any extra on it. But what I heard was, you make this crack in a year or you going back to your corporate life, right? And so I first, the very first thing that I did is I made a, a plan, okay? And for any of you taking notes, this is going to be really, really helpful if you're trying to figure out how to break into any industry and start getting clients. You need a plan. The first part of my plan was my target. Who was I going to sell to? This seems super basic, but it actually took quite a bit of thought. And I'm going to tell you why I chose the target that I chose originally, all right? So stay with me. 
The target for me initially was law schools. And there were a couple of different reasons why my target was law schools. All throughout my legal career, a lot of law students would ask me, you know, how did you transfer law schools? How did you end up doing so well in law school? Because I had all A's in law school. I can say it, you know. Just throwing that out there, right? Your girl is smart. So I had all A's in law school, but the the trick was I had all A's in law school after getting like almost not graduating undergrad. So my story of academic success was very different than a lot of others because most people are who write about academic success have always gotten really good grades or their professors, et cetera. My story was like, I almost flunked out of college, turned it around in law school, developed this study methodology that anyone can use to get great grades. And I used it, my friends used it, and we both got like literally the same GPA down to pluses and minuses. So I knew it worked. And then I sold that in a book. I wrote a book called The Law School Hustle. It still sells today and it still literally helps law students today. I had a a law clerk that worked for me, had under a 3.0, read the book, implemented all the stuff, got a 3.8, got a job, everything. So like that stuff still works. It's a really good book. I'm not just saying that because I wrote it. It's a good book because of all the people that it's helped around the world. But I chose law schools because I knew I had a message for law students. The mistake I made, and this is where I want you all to get the lesson in this. The mistake I made was I knew I had a message for the audience, like law students, but law students were not the people that paid me. And where a lot of speakers mess up and where I messed up in the very beginning was thinking that because I have a powerful multi-million dollar message for the audience that the institution would pay the amount that I should be paid to give the message. And that's not the case. So when you're making your plan, the first thing you need to understand and recognize is what are the competing demands of the people that you're serving? So law students want to do well in law school. They want to graduate. They want to get that six-figure job or go into public service at the highest level and get paid. The number one goal of a law student, most of them that I've talked to, is one, to get a job, two, to get good grades, and three, if they are interested in this, which a lot of them are, to land a high paying job at a law firm. So like 15% of law students get into big law. I was in that 15%. I knew those numbers, so I knew it was appealing to them. But here's where the trick came in. Law schools have totally different objectives than law students. Sure, they want their students to do well. Sure, they want their students to get good grades. But a lot of law schools, in my conversations with them over the years, were like, oh, but we already have an academic success department. Regardless of whether that academic success department was getting actionable, achieve, like recognizable results for students like I was, they felt they already had it covered. And institutions have typically have keep competing demands to students. They want butts and seats. They want those students to pay. They want those students to stay in as much as they keep paying. They want them to be alum and be successful in as much as they donate back. And so the law students' commands and competing demands were different than the, the law schools. How does that relate to you? Some of you have messages that you want to give to like youth, right? You have a great message for youth, maybe even youth who've traditionally been under-resourced because that's where you come from. Or I've had people who come to me and want to speak to uh, foster communities, specifically children and parents going through the foster system. Okay, great. But sometimes the audience you want to speak to has a different goal or objective than the institution that'll pay you to speak to that audience. And you have to know what those objectives are. I didn't, I just went after law schools. The other reason I went after law schools was for um, this reason. I was able to sell them two things. I had the book, The Law School Hustle, that I could sell in bulk. And I had the speech, um, The Law School Hustle, which I was able to sell them. So whether or not, if they didn't buy the speech, they were like, oh, we don't have a budget to pay you to speak. I would sell them a bulk book order for 20 or $25, depending on how much they bought, how many books they bought. So I was able to make my money on in a variety of ways. And so that was really, really important to me too. So when you're making your plan of who you're going to target, some of the things you need to consider is the audience. Do you have a message for them? Do you have a way to sell that message to the institution specifically? And what are you going to sell them? Do you have multiple things that you can sell them? Because I've worked with speakers who have a book, but it's a it's a highly religious book. And so institutions aren't going to be interested in buying that necessarily because they're like, well, we don't want to be seen as pushing a particular religion or a particular angle. So you want to be mindful of those things. What exactly do you have for them? Oh, perfect. Okay. So how much were you paid for your first three events? I Don't remember. I remember like the first, I got like a hundred bucks for my first, first event. It was very low. And then my second event, I think it was a thousand bucks. And after that, I think it was like 2,500. So I was pitching them at the 2,500, 3,500 level when I first started out. And now we're at the $15,000 level for a one-time speech. But 
So then the business model was very simple. Okay. Let me tell you the business model. It was very simple. How many people can I speak to for pay? It wasn't an extraordinarily well thought out business model. It was like, okay, I see people getting paid to speak. How many can I speak to? So first thing in the plan was the target. I had law schools. I was going to sell them either a speech or a book. I wanted to sell at least a hundred books to each school. Like if they wanted me to come and speak and they couldn't pay my budget, I wanted to sell them, give them at least a hundred books. Or I would tell them a speech for 2,500 or 3,500. I did a lot of those speeches. And so it was really, that's what it was, right? And if you all do have questions, just drop, click that little question box and I will answer your questions throughout that. That was a really good question. All right. So that was the first part, target. Who was I targeting? The second part, and about the book, I self-published that book which allowed me to buy the book for $3 per copy and upsell it for like $20 or $25 per copy. So self-publishing really gives you a lot of flexibility. I like that going through that process, but you may for publicity purposes or other reasons want to do traditional publishing. And I've interviewed a ton of traditional publishers. They don't really do it for the money unless you get a really good advance. They are typically doing it because it's uh, seen as more prestigious and they can get some distribution and some marketing and some PR help depending on who they partner with. But now most authors, even if they publish traditionally, are trying to get at least something self-published so they can control the whole process. So that's just a note on self-publishing. And that's something that I talk about in the Speak Your Way to Cash course, which is always available for purchase. You all can get that anytime if you're interested in more like one-off engagements, all right? So that was the first thing, the target. After I had the target, I had to do some outreach. And One thing that I did not do that I should have done is you should do warm outreach first. So people you know, people who've heard you speak, people who already like you, people who already know that you're great at what you do, reach out to them first. I'm going to tell you why I didn't do that. I did cold outreach first. So I looked up, I had an intern that looked up all of the contacts for the law schools in the Midwest. And then I had them do it nationwide because what I found, which is the opposite of what a lot of people say, is that when I was reaching out to law schools in Chicago, which is where I'm I'm from, where I live, um, I live in the suburbs of Chicago. So don't come at me if you're like a true Chicagoan, right? In the heart of the city. We used to live in Brownsville, but we moved, we bought a house in the suburbs. But um, the thing that I found was that the people who were closest to me, like those schools that were near my alma mater, et cetera, they didn't want to pay. Okay. So like they were like, I mean, you down the street, come on, talk to talk to the students. You can do that. You don't necessarily need to um, be paid for that. And so that was a problem for me. So I didn't, I started reaching out nationwide and the organizations that ended up paying me, the law schools that wanted me to come in were like in New York, California, wherever else, but they weren't in Chicago. And so I needed to, that, that's just what I did. Right. So I reached out specifically to all those law schools and the ones that were paying me were not in Chicago. However, I always recommend that you reach out to your network first, if for nothing else to get video of you speaking. But I'll say this, and I don't know if this is anything that you all have experienced. Sometimes when people know you, they're very comfortable making light of your gifts. I'm gonna just repeat that because that's just been my experience. If anyone else has experienced this, just drop a me too in the comments because when people know you, they're very comfortable just kind of like, oh yeah, you can come speak. You live down the street. We know you, we've heard her before, that type of thing. Where I have found a lot of success is marketing outside of the people who know me. I've never stopped at, oh, well, I live here. So I'm gonna only market to people who live near me. I've never done that because when people know you, they sometimes can get a little comfortable with what you bring to the table and what you have to offer. So do not, and then, and here's what that does. Here's what that does to you. And you may not even know that it does that. What that can do is it can allow you to think that your gifts are cheap because all you keep hearing is, oh, we only want to give you a hundred dollars for that. We only want to pay you $500 for that. Or my husband was a pastor when we first got married. My dad is a pastor. And so I did some stuff for the church. Don't do that. <laughs> like, Now, if I do something for the church, I assume that I'm serving the church. I I do not look to the church (laughs) to uh, pay my bills. I personally do not. I don't think that's necessarily a business model if you're a speaker and don't have a certain level of celebrity. But the the problem with, with marketing to friends and family and people who know you exclusively or primarily is that if they discount it or disregard it or think less of it because they're common with you, you can then start to think, well, maybe my idea isn't that good. Or maybe my message isn't that powerful. Or maybe I do need to like 
fall back or maybe it is too expensive. And what I have found is that when people now here's now here's the other key. Now, this is another little tidbit I'm going to share. Once other people outside of my area started to hire me, pay me to speak, fly me out, et cetera. And I'm, the more I posted about it and talked about it, et cetera, people who knew me were then like, oh my gosh, you should come and speak to my corporation. I'll make sure that we have a budget. I'll make sure of this. So like it can operate in reverse. And that's been my experience. That's not everyone's experience, but that's been my experience. And I don't know if it's, I don't know why that is, because I've interviewed a ton of speakers on my podcast. A lot of them are not people of color that we've had the experience of interviewing and talking to. And they've had the exact opposite experience. They've reached out to their network and they have gotten almost all of their leads from people who who knew them. But to be fair and to be clear, it was not their family. It was their coworkers. That's a different game. You can absolutely reach out to people who knew you professionally in a professional setting let them know what you're doing and ask them if they have any leads. I've had speakers do that as well. And that's been really helpful and powerful. But relying on like friends, family, those closest to you, I don't recommend that for a business model. I just don't. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. Real quick, I would love if you applied to work with us at Speak Your Way to Cash. In fact, I have created a short application that would let me know if you are the right person fit. If you are a speaker looking to land five and six figure speaking contracts, you should 100% apply to be in the Speak Your Way to Cash Academy. And here's the beautiful thing. If you get accepted into the academy, you are automatically able to listen to a two hour training where I break down the paid method that myself and my clients use to land five and six figure corporate speaking contracts. All you need to do to apply is go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash apply. Go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash apply. Again, go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash apply. Now, if you want to make it even easier and you're already on your phone, pull out your phone and text me. That's right. You can now text me directly to apply and to learn more about working with Speak Your Way to Cash. So you can text me at 312-847-4590. Again, 312-847-4590. Just text me apply to 312-847-4590. All right, guys, let's get back to this great episode. So first we got our target. Then we developed a cold outreach strategy. How did I reach out to these folks? So I got the emails. I think I was reaching out then to the Dean of Students. I don't think that's necessarily the best contact at a law school, but I was reaching out to the Dean of Students and they would direct me to the appropriate department or I would reach out to whomever is over academic success at the university or the law school. That wasn't always the best because they saw the program as a, almost like it was competing with what they have going on. And so that, you know, those are, these are just mistakes, right? That were made in the very beginning, but I did cold outreach. And this goes to something I said in in yesterday's live, which is, let me be really, really, really clear about this because I don't want y'all to miss this. You could do the wrong thing consistently and still get results. That is what I feel like built my business. Being consistent, even though it wasn't the most optimized activity, I was able to get results because I was doing it consistently. I was reaching out to hundreds of people a week. I was having three to five sales conversations per week. And so now when I ever have a lull in my business, let me tell y'all, This is why it's critical to understand sales and know how to do cold outreach, drum up business like this stuff. If you understand and my dad used to tell me this all the time because my dad's in sales. If you understand sales, you'll never have to worry about where your next meal is coming from if you can strategically build your pipeline and you're comfortable doing the work. What I see is people tell me they want to speak, but they're not pitching. And so I know that means either A, you don't know who to pitch, B, you don't know how to pitch, three, you are scared to pitch because you're scared to do the wrong thing. So I want to give you all permission to do it wrong. Who cares? I mean, you want to do it as professionally as possible. You don't want to embarrass your brand, but your brand is going to grow. And if you don't do, if you don't even do it wrong, you can't get to doing it right right? You cannot get to doing it right. So now people who join Speak Your Way to Cash Academy, they get templates and I think they have over 70 templates, et cetera. And so they're able to to skip all these mistakes that I made because they work with me and I just tell them like, nah, that's, 
My data has shown me that does not work. However, don't be afraid if you're out there and you genuinely cannot afford coaching, you can't afford to do anything. We have a free webinar end of this month, end of April, so everyone can afford that. But like, if you're someone who's like, I can't afford to invest in a coach and blah, 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 which I don't always believe, but that's fine. If you're in that camp, do it wrong, but you got to do something. (laughs) You have to do something. So I was still achieving some results doing this stuff, even though it wasn't right. It wasn't necessarily right. So I did the cold outreach. And then three, I, I would do the engagement. I would go do the engagement. And every engagement I did, I made a commitment that every engagement I did for an entire year, I was going to record it. And I still have all of those recordings. I was going to record it. I was going to get uh, video testimonials. And I didn't have a ton of money to invest in video. So let me tell y'all, money ain't never stopping us over here. Because here's the thing. it People say like, you don't necess- it takes money to make money. It may not take money to make your first dollar, but it's going to take money to elevate. It really is. Because eventually you're going to get, I'm grown. I got a kid. I got a husband. I'm grown. I got a mortgage. Like I don't have time to be spinning my wheels on things that other people have already figured out. So I'm going to hire the coach. I'm going to hire the assistant. I'm going to hire the person to help me do this. I'm going to hire the person to clean my house. I'm not wasting time on things that I don't need to waste time on. That's just me. And I will temporarily sacrifice some pleasures to invest in things that will help me to have pleasure long term, right? Like I'm telling y'all, what I love to do is actually travel and vacation. I don't necessarily love to work. Like some people are like, oh, I'm a workaholic. I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not anymore because I don't have to be. And when you invest strategically, you don't have to be either. So personally, I love what I do. I like what I do. I love speaking, but no. I'm going to hire the people to to tell me the things. But even if you can't hire the people to tell you the things, you have to start doing things wrong consistently enough so that you can learn from your results. One of the things that I did do early on was I got a CRM, which is just a database where you put all your leads and it tracks your open rate, your deliverability rate, your response rate. And I was looking at the numbers and I could compare those numbers. (laughs) It must be an Ashley Trace. Girl, I can compare those numbers to industry averages. So I could see, okay, 50 people open my email, but of all the people that clicked on my website, only one booked a call with me. So that told me my website was horrible. So I knew I had to invest in getting my website done. But my first website, I made it myself on Wix. Like literally made it myself on Wix. I just did, I made it black and white as simple as I could. And then that was it. Like that was the website that I had. So you can't make, it's hard for me to hear people make a whole lot of excuses who haven't started. Now, no, you know, don't feel bad or anything, but if you really do desire something, you have to determine based on your actions, how bad you want it to come to pass. Okay. How bad you want it to come to pass. That's definitely something to to keep in mind. So I got a question here. It's a really good question. I'm going to put it on the screen. Great content. Any recommendations on who or how to pitch when your message and model have a more spiritual foundation slash message? I'll be serving teens and young adults who may be struggling with their identity and or preparing for adulthood and their purpose. So, okay, I'm going to tell you guys some hard truths about this. And you can, you know, take it or leave it, right? What do I know? Here's, you can sell anything if it's packaged appropriately. Now, If you're selling, if you want to, if your audience are teens, if you want to be paid to speak, you need to figure out who's going to pay you to speak to teens. And once you figure out who's going to pay you to speak to teens, then you need to figure out what do they care about? Because as bad as this sounds, and I think this is something that has kept particularly people that look like like me (laughs) back a little bit, is like, I know a lot of Black women who come, 100% of the women in Speaker Ready Cash Academy identify as Black or Latino women of color, right? And one of the things that holds us back when having targeted sales conversations is we lead with our heart. So the heart says, I want to help these teens to find their purpose. I want to make sure they know who they are. And God, I want to do all these things. Okay, great. If that's all you want and you're taking profit off the table, stay with me on this because I don't want to fit nobody, but I want to tell you the truth. If that's all you want and you're taking profit off the table, then all you need to do is go to churches and speak it for, to kids for free. But if you want to sell a, a, want to sell something, all right, you want to have a for-profit business and sell something, you have to package your heart-centered mission in a way that speaks the language of your client. What do they care about? 
Because schools, if you were like, hey, I want to come in and teach your kids how to have purpose, they're going to be like, and? You know what I mean? They may not say that because, of course, all schools want to help kids. But what are the competing day-to-day demands that the individual person you're selling to who may work at a school or who may work at a college has that is competing with this heart-centered mission that you have and that they may share? Well, for colleges right now, it's like how to keep kids motivated virtually because kids are literally not coming back to school. When they don't come back to school, the student activities budget drops. You may have to let go of adjunct professors. You may So they're dealing with all of that. How does your message speak or help them with that issue? Because I'm telling you right now, I get pitched things every day. And it's like the pitch is totally tone deaf to the actual competing demands that I have on a day to day as a business owner. And so I don't bite. If you have a message of purpose, I think purpose isn't a great word to sell things because it doesn't really mean much. It means a million things to a million people. It needs to be a little bit more specific. And I would uh, position it like it has to be positioned for right now. Pandemic, Zoom fatigue, virtual learning. A lot of students are dealing with like uh, depression and anxiety over what the future holds. They missed out on their college experience that they've been looking forward to for at least the four years of high school, if not longer. They're not going to experience all the same stories that their parents told them about college. So how are they then supposed to be motivated right now? If you're going into underprivileged communities, like or under-resourced communities rather, then what are the real competing demands? And then whatever you present, it needs to be a program that speaks to those demands. When you get there, after you get the check, once you are paid, you show up, you speak to the hearts of the people, you change their lives, change their minds, et cetera. But pitching it and positioning it has to be from the angle of the person who's writing the check. Otherwise, you'll never even get to that heart message or you can get to it, but you won't get paid for it. And that's what I think people miss is like the two things are different. And and that was something that I missed when I first started out because I was selling them a book. And if the students or the professors would have read the Law School Hustle, one of the chapters towards the end of the book is all about how I transferred schools. Well, what law school wants me to come in and teach their students how to transfer out of that particular institution, especially if it was ranked lower. Because that was my story. Like I went to a law school, it was ranked very low, still is. And I transferred out. I went to from that law school to Northwestern, one of the schools ranked uh, in the top 14 schools in the nation. That was my personal story. And it's appealing to law students, but it's not appealing to institutions. So there was a, a split in interest there. So you do have to be careful when your message may resonate with the audience, but doesn't help the institution. Your goal, because the institution is your client. You got to help the client. So you need to know what they care about. Okay. And so, okay, I'm glad this was good. I'm glad this was helpful, Lashante. I'm glad it was helpful. So I, I really want you to think about that. And the ways that you do that, the way that we help people do that in the academy is we actually do market research and we ask these questions and we learn how does this resonate with your particular, when you hear the currency of confidence, what do you think of first? Does that sound like something you'd want to bring to campus just based off the title so that we can title our programs appropriately and we can sell to their their pain points. But what a lot of people do is they sell to their own pain points. So because when you were in high school, you were like, oh, I really struggle with X, Y, and Z. You're selling to your personal pain point from the perspective of the audience. But before you get to the audience, you have to get a client. Before I can speak to the masses and inspire them and change their lives, I have to get a client, right? Nothing happens for me until I get a client first. And my client is the institution. So I need to know that client's demands. I need to know what they're concerned about, what they're worried about, what is their idea of success and cater to that. Because I know that I can reach the audience just based on the way that that I've been trained to speak for my whole life. Like I know how to I know I know how to reach the audience. But what is the client concerned about? And how do you make sure that you coming in to speak doesn't create more work for your client? <laughs> okay. So how can you make that whole process easier? And that's a part of the paid method. So that's what I did in the beginning. In the beginning, I just got as many clients as possible. I didn't do a lot of repeat bookings. I didn't go back to a school twice. Like I went to the school once, did that one speech. That was pretty much it. I did not present them with a long-term solution to the ultimate problem. I just got the first engagement. And what I realized over time is like, man, I'm getting older. I can't be hopping in and off planes like this. This is not fun for me anymore. How, what am I going to do to change this up? And that's when I pivoted and was like, okay, one, let me develop a framework, one solid framework that I can have a variety of spinoff 
products and services off of that really make sense for my clientele and my client base. Two, I reanalyzed who my clients should be. The second shift that I made after law schools was just colleges and universities generally speaking at orientations, et cetera, and to their um, their uh, professors. And then the third shift I made was going straight into corporate. So going back to what I knew because I had left corporate. Right. And I worked at Enterprise and Philip Morris and a variety of Fortune 500 corporations. And even as a lawyer, I represented large insurance companies, but I'd left all that to start my own business. And I made a huge mistake by not keeping the same clientele that I was used to serving and just doing something totally different. I should have just stayed with corporate. I went back to corporate. They're used to hiring speakers and consultants on a high level over a longer period of time. And so I was able to increase my average contract value significantly and really just serve at a higher level. So I, I made that shift and that was the shift that really catapulted my business. And I really enjoyed that. I like selling to corporations and, and corporate leaders. And that is where the paid methodology was born because I'm like, man, I wish I wish I would have just known this information on the front end and I know how to sell into corporations, whereas a lot of people don't. So that was the genesis of Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, the Speak Your Way to Cash event, the Speak Your Way to Cash Academy. All of that came from this process, this long multi-year process that I went through to get to where I am now and what I do now. And so I think that overall, I wanted to share this because the way that I got my first clients, you could still go out today, do that stuff and get your first client. But the way that I built a sustainable business was by having larger offers to sell into corporations and large state universities that would allow me to work with the students and or um, employees for a longer period of time. And I sell them two things, the Currency of Confidence program or the Love Method of Communication program. Both of them teach on different topics. They both deal with communication and confidence. And that is essentially the realm in which I play in the corporate space. But that's it. So I developed frameworks, which is something that's really critical and important that I recommend you do if you're going to sell at a higher level, because you need to be able to quickly, clearly, and concisely articulate the program you're going to bring in utilizing the language of your client. So I wanted to share this stuff with you all to just give you a lens into the shifts that I've made in my business, why I made them, the things that I did in the beginning, why I did them, some things that worked, some things that didn't. So if you're at the point where you're like, all right, I got to get my first engagement. And you're like, but you know what? I really want to, I want to see the sales script. I want to do all that stuff. You can always check out the Speak Your Way to Cash course. And you can go to speakyourwaytocash.com to find out more about the course and all the other things that we have to offer. But one of the things I want you to do, if you're a speaker and you want to make speaking a real revenue stream in your business, you 100% need to mark your calendars for November 4th through November 6th, 2021, okay? This year, right? November 4th through November 6th, we are having Speaker Rate of Cash Live. It is the best event on the planet for speakers who want to land five and six figure corporate speaking contracts and get their mind right to do it. You need to be there. So get your ticket now. It sells out months in advance. We released tickets not too long ago. We already have folks registered, excited about coming. Register. Do not delay. Make this investment in your business. It will be the best event you've ever attended, ever, hands down right? Virtual or in person. It is virtual. We have people from all over the world attending. And here's what we're doing this year for the event to make sure that it's like off the charts. Last year, the event got rave reviews. I loved it. Everyone who attended gave it five stars. But one of the things that I missed was seeing everyone's face. This year, we are going to see, I, we're like, we're investing a ton of money in the text so that I can see all of your beautiful faces. It'll be cameras on, show up in your Sunday's best. Um, we'll be engaging and interacting. You'll be engaging and interacting with each other. We've added breakout sessions so you can get to know the other women in the program. And for those of you who attended last year, you know there were lifelong friendships made, book clubs were formed, accountability partners were formed. We really do create a community at our events and we're taking that community portion of it up to a whole nother level this year. So I wanna make sure that you're there and you take advantage of it before it sells out. Don't be hitting me up in like August. Like, I can't believe it sold out. I thought it was in November. It sells out early, which is why we release tickets early. And, and right now for the next, it's April 21st. So for the next few weeks, we're still in early bird pricing. Ticket prices will be going up. The information, you're going to spend three days with me at this event. A VIP day with me is $25,000. You're going to spend three days with me at this event, three days, right? Like it, it is a lot of great information, well tailored to help you skyrocket your speaking business. You can read all the reviews on the event website. You can go to speakyourwaytocash.com slash event to get your ticket for this event so that you do not miss out and be reading about it on the internet. You do not want to be in that number. So make sure you're there. I'd love to host you. 
It is life changing. I'm telling you this. Check out their reviews. See what people say. Check in with anyone who's been before. They they're happy to talk to you about their experience. But it's a great thing. So hopefully you all can attend and are able to get all the gems that are going to be dropped over that three day period. It's going to be off the chain. So make sure you're there. I will see you guys there. Hopefully this was helpful. If you enjoyed this, share it with a friend. Let me know in the comments. I'm going to try to do a little bit more of these lives when I can. You know, I got the baby. So I try to do them early or maybe late when she's down or with her sitter. But super excited about this, guys. Thank you so much for rocking with me at the Speaker Ready Cash podcast. We are launching our 100th episode very, very soon. Thank you for all your reviews. Rate, share, like. Um, Keep all of that up. And as always, I cannot wait to see you speak your way to cash. Have a good one. It's Ashley Kirkwood signing out. All right, wasn't that interview amazing? If you're anything like me, you have pages full of notes. But here's the thing. Before you head out, I want you to go to facebook.com and... Join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. That is where I am. That's where a ton of other speakers are, a ton of other people who listen to the show. All We all congregate there and chat. And it's 100% free. Now, if you're ready to take your speaking career to the next level, I have two ways for you to do that. One, you can go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash SYWTC live replay and pick up the live replay. That training is seven modules, chock full of information. It's crazy. Go over there, read all about it. Or if you want a more personal experience, you're already, you already know that you want to be a speaker. You're ready to fully commit and you want someone to walk you through it and save you tons of time Googling and doing it on your own. Then book a VIP day with me. You can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com, scroll down until you see the VIP day section and get more information on that there. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Please do not forget to leave us a review. That is how we keep this train rolling and get some of the best speakers in the world to get on this show. So please, please, please leave a review. Shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and Facebook in the Speaker Way to Cash group, Instagram at, at the Ashley Nicole Show. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you and say hi. All right, y'all have an awesome, awesome day.